Rose Art is the most hated art brand in existence. In fact, they're so hated that even though they don't even exist anymore, when I was doing research for this video, it was easier for me to find people dunking on Rose Art crayons than it was to find actual information about Rose Art. And I feel like if you are in that group that I am, that was born between the late 80s all the way up until the early 2000s, we deserve financial compensation for using Rose Art. Nobody wanted Rose Art crayons. Everybody wanted the 64 count Crayola crayon set with the sharpener on the back. But I feel like as I get older, I see things a lot more clearer. And it got me thinking, were we all just really dramatic kids or was Rose Art really the bane of our existence? So I went ahead and took the initiative and I bought literally so much vintage Rose Art, current day crazy art, and of course current day Crayola. And today I'm finally gonna answer that age old question. Was Rose Art really as bad as we thought it was? So the first Rose Art item that I tried out were these Rose Art 10 count markers. And these are from the year 2012. And the first thing that I gotta say is that the packaging looks exactly like Crayolas, except for one key element, and that's located right here on the top. Now, if you were a kid growing up, literally in the past 30 years, you know that the best part of having Crayola markers is being able to stack them in a sword and being able to hit your classmates with it. That was the whole appeal. But the problem with these Rose Art ones, first of all, is the fact that you can't do that because they have a notch that prevents it from happening. Look at this. You can't snap them together. So already I'm like, uh-uh, no, in the trash they go. So to test out the markers, I of course tested them against Crazy Art, which is like the modern day version of Rose Art, and of course Crayola Crayon. But let me tell you guys that when I tested them out, they pretty much worked almost the exact same as the Crayola one. Like if you look up close, it looks pretty much just like the Crayola ones, just slightly muted. But what was really dramatic was whenever I compared them to the Crazy Art. Now, if you look up close to these, it's a mess, like an actual mess. Now, remember, these Rose Art markers are literally from 2012, a decade old. And I just bought these Crazy Art markers literally last week from Walmart. And the Crazy Art markers, if you look at the comparisons, they're pretty much all completely dried out. The Rose Art marker quality, it is slightly worse quality, but only by like a tiny micro bit. If both of them were free, I would pick the Crayola. But if I was on a budget or just wanted to save some money, the Rose Art ones would get the job done fine. Now, the next item that I tested out from the infamous Rose Arts was an item that I 1000% had. Like, I specifically remember having this one. And as much as I loved crayons, this one was my art supply of choice back in the day. And this, of course, is Rose Arts Watercolor. Now, this one is straight up all the way from 2009, so it is 12 years old. I don't know if there's like a shortage going on or something, but I literally could not find the eight count Crayola watercolor literally anywhere, nowhere. And I searched two different Walmarts. I searched Target, Dollar Tree online. Well, I didn't search that hard online, but regardless, I couldn't find it anywhere in my town. So ultimately I ended up just using this like really janky 16 pack that I have from like years ago. That's like missing two colors and the paintbrush in the entire case and just compared it to that. My very first impression whenever I opened up these Rose Art watercolor paint thingies is that I was very impressed with this brush. And the reason I was so impressed with it is because if you look closely, it's an actual real watercolor brush. Like this is something that I would literally use in my paintings. And if you compare that to modern day's knockoff watercolor, this brush is the bane to my existence. The bristles are made out of this weird wire. The paint brush itself is completely bendable and then it like breaks and then you have like this wonky little paintbrush. Even if you're like a toddler or something, like I imagine that this paintbrush wouldn't do anything for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Now, as far as like the actual swatches of the Crayola, Rose Art and Crazy Art go, I was quite taken back because if you look close enough and I'll insert a video now, the Crayola and Rose Art, both of the paints, they like did exactly what watercolor is supposed to do, which is paint that's broken down by water. These are both really, really nice. And the colors were both very vibrant. The paint was breaking down very nice. I was very pleasantly surprised up until this point. And what actually shocked me was 
not from the rose art, but from the crazy art. This paint, guys, is literally some of the worst paint that I have ever used. If you look closely, you can see that the paint, it doesn't even look like a swatch of watercolor. It kind of looks like if I mixed food coloring with like water and flour and like combined it all together and then like rubbed that concoction on a page. Crazy Art also left like this weird like film texture down whenever it dried down. So like if I was to close my eyes, I know exactly where I painted because it has like this weird crusty feel to it. And another weird thing that I found is that the paint didn't get broken down by water. It kind of like kept its form, if that makes sense. Like it was like a layer of watercolor paint and then like the water on top of it was just floating. And then whenever I dip my paintbrush into it, it left like this weird indentation in the paint, which I've never seen before. And it was almost like I was dipping my paintbrush into like mud or something. The quality of the Rose Art watercolor it is just a little bit ever so tacky. Like it does feel like it has a little bit more of like a filler in it that makes it a little bit more like thick instead of like watercolory, if that makes sense. But other than that, it's pretty much the exact same quality as Crayola in every single way. If I had to choose between the two, I wouldn't care which one because they're so similar. Next up on the list of things that I tested out from Rose Art, of course, were colored pencils. And these specific Rose Art pencils are all the way from 2010. So these colored pencils are 11 years old. And again, not to bring it up, but I really do think there's like a Crayola shortage or something going on because along with the watercolor, I could not find any Crayola colored pencils anywhere. So ultimately I ended up just using this like really old 24 pack of Crayola colored pencils that I have. It's like, and you thought the last one was janky? This one is like 10 times worse. Like the box is like breaking in half and then like Oosh. And then like the actual colors, like half of them are missing. And to make it even worse, whenever I was testing these out, half of these colors aren't even Crayola. They're literally Prismacolor colored pencils. So I had to be very tactical when it came to testing out the colored pencils. First thing that I noticed about these colored pencils is that they definitely look like a straight up knockoff to the Crayola ones. Like, have you ever seen Euphoria? You know, like Maddie, or like her best friend Cassie tries to copy her and it's just, it doesn't work out. This is the exact same situation here. Now, I think this one is definitely the underdog of all the art supplies that I'm testing out today because when I tested these out, I was actually taken back, if you will, because the Rose Art colored pencils, in my opinion, as somebody who's worked with plenty of colored pencils, just from like testing them out and doing a couple of swatches, they actually worked much better than the Crayola. Like, it's very subtle, but you can definitely see it. Like, if you look close enough, you can see that the Rose Art just went down a little bit more smooth. You can see that the color is just a little bit more creamier, a little less waxier. So not only is it creamier and work better, but it didn't have any scratches. And on top of that, I feel like some of the color was even better than the Crayola. And as far as the Crazy Art colored pencils go, these pencils, they were so scratchy. It kind of reminded me of like rubbing nails on a chalkboard whenever I was testing these out. If you look close enough to the swatches, it kind of looks like I got like a needle or something and just like went over it on top of it and like scratched the paper. I mean, these, the crazy art were just so scratchy. The quality of the Rose Art colored pencils coming in as a total surprise to me. I, I did not expect this to be happening at all. The Rose Art colored pencils, they seem to be a little bit better quality. I would pick them over the Crayola. And for the final item that I just know everybody has been absolutely waiting for me to talk about. <sighs> Hold on, I need to take a second. Let me just breathe. <sighs> because I have a lot to say with this one. I feel like this art supply is so bad that it's not even famous, it's infamous, that everybody knows about it. And this, of course, is the one, the only, drum roll please, Rose Art crayons. Okay, as far as like the Rose Art crayons go, I for sure, for sure have used these in the past. And I specifically have very, very, very vivid memories of using this. And what I specifically remember about these crayons is the fact that they were so waxy 
that you couldn't even draw. I hated the fact that I couldn't get really detailed with my coloring books because I don't know, they would just like smear and break all the time. I hated the way they smelled. I hated the wrapper around them. I mean, just all around these crayons from what I remember were just absolutely just atrocious. You know what I mean? Like the whole experience of using Rose Art crayons, it just like made you depressed as a child. These are all the way straight from 2006. These are the 24 count Rose Art crayons. First of all, we need to do a smell test because I know for sure these are not gonna smell like Crayola. I just, I just know it in my heart. Like I just, I just know it. Yeah, no, I don't smell anything. But on the other hand, we have the Crayolas, which I mean, everybody knows. If I say the smell of crayons, this is what it, oh God, ah, oh, it smells so good. This is what everybody knows. Oh my God. It smells like childhood. There's literally no better scent in the world than Crayola crayons. Let's see if the crazy art passes the smell test. Oh, it smells like wet cardboard. It smells kind of like dirt on cardboard. Like that is not a pleasant smell at all. Now, as far as testing out the crayons went, first I decided to test out the initial textures of it all. And what my findings found is that Rose Art, again, is very similar to the Crayola. I do have to say that I did notice that the formula was a lot more like waxy. And so if you look at the swatches, I have a couple of areas that are like really dark compared to the rest of the swatch. And my theory for that is that I think Rose Art has a really soft wax to it and the friction of drawing with it, I think heats up the wax and then it has this weird buildup that we've all experienced with Rose Art. And then because it was a lot chunkier, I noticed that a lot more like pieces of the wax would like get attached to the sides of the paper. But unlike a pencil, you can't just blow it off because it's like wax. And so when I was testing out the crayons, I had to like flick off the individual rogue crayon pieces. But yeah, the formula wasn't as horrendous as I remember. But what absolutely was horrendous was no shocker, the crazy art. Oh my God. Like I thought the watercolor and the markers were bad. Wait till you see the crayons. Oh my gosh. Where do I even begin? So if you look at the green swatch of the crazy art, you'll notice that there's like one area where it's kind of like missing color. And I don't know what happened, but as I was swatching, like the crayon just like stopped working. Like, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but it was like, I ran into like an area that was just pure wax that didn't have any color in it. And so I was like just rubbing this pure clear wax on to a piece of paper. Before I put these away, oh my God. Ah, oh, God. And then the last thing about the crazy art that like really freaked me out that the other two did not have is that the crazy art were really, they were like sticky. From this point forward, I think it's pretty clear that the crazy art are just like absolute garbage, garbage quality compared to the other two, which is saying a lot because we're dealing with the most notoriously bad crayon of all time. So for the color section, I didn't even bother including crazy art just because I feel like it would have wasted everybody's time. So I just wanted to do one last comparison between Crayola and Rose Art. And I decided to use printer paper for this because it's super slippery. And as you can see, like from afar, they're pretty identical. They're, there's nothing really super dramatic from afar at all. And something really specifically that I remember about Rose Art crayons is that you would get like one specific color and as you were coloring, there would be like little bits of another color in it. And that weird phenomenon of finding different colors in my crayons, that happened today. You can see that there's like weird bits of blue or black or green, I can't really tell, but there's like other colors in it. Oh, and apparently the Rose Art smears because now my hand is all black and the, and the paper is black as well. So eh, that's great. The Rose Art crayon quality, it's obviously worse. But now that I've tested out Crazy Art, I feel like Crazy Art has truly shown me what terrible quality crayon is. I feel like on a scale of Crayola to Crazy Art, it's definitely floating somewhere in the middle. So in retrospect, I feel like Rose Art as a whole, I'm just gonna say it now, 
it truly wasn't the worst thing in the world. Back in like the early 2000s, you could get rose art stuff for literally half the price of Crayola. And just the fact that some of these rose art art supplies worked almost identical as their counterpart. You heard it here first, besides the crayons, justice for rose art. So anyway, guys, that's my personal opinion on rose art. 20 years later, this is what I found. If you wanna see more art reviews, I'll put a playlist here. I recently did a video where I tested out $1,200 watercolor. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video. I hope that you have the most wonderful day today. And with that being said, I will see you guys next video. Bye.